So for tonight, Q&A question is on Samma Sati and Samma Samadhi. So Venerable have uh, translated Samma Sati as uh, harmonious uh, attention. So can Venerable uh, enlighten us uh, on the Samma Sati? Well, the important thing we have to discuss is the last part of the Supernormal Eightfold Way, uh, the seventh and the eighth steps of the Supernormal Eightfold Way. Those are the last two steps. We have we have already spoken of. the harmonious exercise and in speaking about the harmonious exercise we were speaking about the harmonious attention that means what is called the satipatthana and we also pointed out that satipatthana is to withdraw our attention from the external surroundings and to focus on what is going on within us. And what is going on within is what is happening to the body, how the body feels, whether comfortable or uncomfortable. And the emotional state, whether it is agitated or whether it is calm. And then the thoughts that arise in the mind. We also pointed out that when we keep on observing what is going on within us, we are really becoming aware of our reaction to what is going on outside. If there is a reaction, we are aware of it. If there is no reaction, we are aware of that also. The reaction really comes in the form of an agitation in the body, in the feelings, in the emotional state, and the thought. If there is no agitation, if there is no reaction, then we'll be aware of the calmness and tranquility of the body, the relaxation of the body and calmness of the mind. Now, as the mind becomes 
calm and the body becomes relaxed, we begin to feel comfortable. And with the comfort, the mind calms down. We begin to become aware of the stillness of the mind. And we are also aware that the, what are called the five hindrances or the emotional disturbances are absent. When we, aware, when we are aware that the emotional disturbances are absent, we are also aware that the thoughts that occur in the mind are simply asking a question and answering the question. There are no other thoughts that come up. Is the mind calm is a question. Ah, it is quite calm. That is an answer. This is breathing in is a question. Uh, uh, is the breathing, what, what is happening to the breathing is a question. The breathing is breathing in, the breath is coming in. That is an answer. So simply things like that, questions and answers. What is this? This is this. That is what is called vitakka vichara. And the mind is tranquil, undisturbed. That is, that tranquility of mind is the peace that is the experience. That absence of disturbance is the preeti and the relaxation of the body and the feeling of comfort is the sukha. And the mind, not going in two different directions, That is ekagata. So, in other words, we are aware that we have entered the first jhana. When the mind is fully calm and tranquil, we have entered the first jhana. And jhana means we have come out of the world of emotions. We are out of the emotional world. And that is why we call it ecstasy. Ecstasy means standing out. We have withdrawn from the emotional world because the mind is calm and tranquil. Then, of course, once we have entered that state, from there we withdraw further and we stop the thinking process 
That means we stop the asking of questions and answering questions. So we stop the thinking process. When we have stopped the thinking process, we are in the second jhana. Then we let go further the PT part. It's a kind of uh, satisfaction and happiness. Then we get into the third jhana. We become neutral experience. And that neutral experience is further reduced when the neutral bodily experience, physical experience. And now mind now enter the third jhana. And when we enter the fourth jhana, we have taken our attention fully out of the experience of anything external, the objective part. So we are focused completely on the subjective experience. And when we are focused on the subjective experience, we are experiencing not what we perceive, we are experiencing the process of perception. That is becoming aware of the what is called upekka, upa ikkati, becoming aware of what is going on within. And of course, we can, we are now aware of the process of perception. So when we are aware of the process of perception, we are not aware of what is perceived. That means the reaction to the process, reaction to the objects has stopped completely. And that means We are out of the objective world. When we are out of the objective world, we can become aware of the process of perception and that is how we become aware of uh, 
द कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट्स ऑफ द प्रोसेस ऑफ परसेप्शन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट्स ऑफ द प्रोसेस ऑफ परसेप्शन is what the buddha analyzed into four parts rupa vedana sanya sankara vijnana which is today called the five aggregates that is the english translators use that word five aggregates but we use it the uh, different translation we call it the five constituents of the process of perception which is more meaningful it is by becoming aware of the five pro- constituents of the process of perception that we begin to become aware of what is called the paticca samuppada what we call the antecedental concurrence or the concurrence of the process series of antecedents concurrence of the series of antecedents we use the word concurrence because it is all happening at the same time it is independent of time then through that process we become aware of the process of cognition and the process of affection the vedana and the sanya the sanya produces the cognitive process and the vedana produces the affective process now a complete discussion of this process is what is called the paticca samuppada so that we'll have to leave for another time so the important thing here is becoming aware of the process of uh, perception now there is another possibility in, in uh, once you become aware of the uh, the concurrence of antecedents or the antecedental concurrence Uh, you through that process itself you can be liberated from the existential way of thinking and begin to experience the experiential way of thinking that is the liberation from the dream of existence so once you are liberated from the dream of existence you have become an arahant 
बट यू कुड ऑल्सो कंटिन्यू लुकिंग एट द प्रोसेस ऑफ परसेप्शन बिकॉज योर attention is now focused on what is going on within which is the process of perception and because of that you are not aware of what you perceive when you are not aware of what you perceive you don't see anything so when you are not aware of what you perceive that is what is called the sphere of infinite space the sphere of infinite space and then from there you can focus on the process of perception and that is the sphere of infinite perception vijnana chaitanya the sphere of no perception is the sphere of infinite space which is called akasha nanchayatana when you are aware of the process of perception then you are focusing on the process of perception and that is vijnana nanchayatana so we can get out of that also by giving up the process of perception and you are not focusing on anything in other words you are focusing on nothing that focusing on nothing is the akinchanya yatana and then you can even give up that you can give up focusing on nothing and that is how you get into the focusing on neither sensation nor no sensation that is neva sanya na sanya yatana then that is where uddakaram had arrived at but the buddha wanted to go further there was no one to teach him so he didn't go but later he started giving up and when he gave up the neither sensation nor no sensation he got into that state called the cessation of feeling and sensation and in that state there is no sensations now i am using the word sensations that sensations is absent that means there is no kind of consciousness at all there is only the body is not dead that is all the difference 
but the mind is absent. What we call the mind is stopped. In other words, the mind is not an entity separate from the body. Mind is only an activity of the body. And that activity is stopped. That is all. And in that state you are not conscious of anything. So then you come out of that. When you come out of that you get back to sensation and feeling. And moment you get into sensation and feeling, that is the mental activity, sankhara. So the mental activity begins and you can go back again through that same process, you get into neither sensation no no sensation, then you get into nothingness, then you get into the process of perception, then you begin to become aware of the objects and then when you begin to become aware of the objects you are in the third jhana. Then from there on you can go to the second jhana and the first jhana and once you are in the first jhana you have all the uh, three process of construction and then you become aware of Uh, mental images and you are also aware of names or identities, identity. You are aware of entities and identities. And then you become aware of a world full of things, objects, and then you begin to experience the sensations in relationship to those objects, the feelings, three kinds of feelings, and then you begin to react to those feelings, and with the reaction to those feelings, you become aware of a subjective and an objective and you begin to personalize the subjective and alienate the objective. When you personalize the subjective, then you begin to look for a person who begins to claim ownership of what has been personalized. And in doing that, you begin to find the only thing that you can claim as the owner is the body. Therefore, the body becomes the owner and yourself. So the body becomes the self. When the body becomes the self, the body is seen to exist in the past, present and future. And when the body begins to exist in the past, that means the body has a birth. The body has a birth and the body begins to age 
and the body has a death and that creates grief lamentation pain depression and exhaustion that is the dukkha the suffering so that is you begin to understand what is called the concurrence of a series of antecedents now this is of course something that we can discuss in the future in more detail so i don't know whether <laughs> do you have any questions there yeah. I just like to ask Mante's opinion uh, regarding the Sati Patana Vipassana uh, Bhavana. In uh, in in uh, some uh, teachers, the reverences uh, explain that uh, um, yeah, Sati Patana Vipassana Bhavana uh, practitioner also practicing the Eight Noble Path, which is. divided into sila samadhi panya so um when the yogi gains uh, 13 insight knowledges realize the insight knowledges uh, they will attain to a stream winner which is also written in some books the 13 insight knowledges so can you <laughs> bante please explain your opinion and that is sati patana vipassana bhavana uh, um, but you have to tell me what those 13 uh, knowledge is um <laughs> i i can't tell all but uh i can tell a few um that is uh, like realization of nama rupa uh, cause and effect um and then um um Uh, so yes, I'm Pali in Bali. You see, so so I I I I forgot the Pali word. Ah. Uh, uh, um. So um. Uh, the thirteen uh, things. Ah, uh, uh, in the in the side uh, knowledges. Yeah. I am not uh, fully aware of those thirteen thirteen things that they are talking about. Hmm. and uh, if you begin to talk about the 13 things i can explain mm. uh um, <coughs> it is in where, some where, books where, where do you get this 13 things the, the, the some uh, some uh, references explain that you see for a stream winner to to attain to this uh, in with this inside knowledge is in some books it was mentioned that Do you do you know that ah yeah you can tell yeah Bhante is it uh, loud enough okay good well in the burmese tradition of uh, meditation I'm not aware much about the Thai tradition. Uh, we're speaking about these, I think, even 14 or 16 stages of uh, nyanas or knowledges, which the practitioners go through when he is uh, going towards the path to nibbana. The first stage is nama rupa paricheda nyana. This uh, nyana knowledge about the uh, awareness. about the two components of our nature nama and rupa 
uh, Rupa being the body and the mental process being the Nama. And then the second process uh, and the second Jnana awareness is this Pachaya uh, Parigaha uh, Jnana. They are speaking about the causality uh, of between these two. One is causing the other, the other is causing the other. Then a sense of kind of a relationship, causational relationship between both of them. Is it loud enough I'm speaking or is the clear, uh, is the yeah. loud enough I, I'm speaking? Because my lips are almost on the microphone. Is it good enough? Okay. And the number three is Samasana Nyana, which is uh, the knowledge about the three characteristics of, uh, 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 of all phenomena, material or a mental, Nama Rupa. Nama means the mental and Rupa uh, being the, the physical. Anicca Dukkha Anatta. Huh? Anicca Dukkha Anatta. Oh. And then after this, uh, the solidity of the body, this compactness of the body begins to disintegrate in the next, in the fourth jnana, which is called the Udaya Bhaya jnana. In Udaya Bhaya jnana, ah, Udaya Bhaya jnana. Yeah. then in Udaya Bhaya jnana, the, the, the solidity ha begins to disintegrate and then there is a sense of a, uh, the body begins to be experienced as a uh, 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 rising and falling of a variety of sensations to a degree of which the body is not any more solid but uh, uh, everything is kind of vibrating or uh, uh, like that. And then there is, a, uh, there is another stage is called uh, bang uh, Banganyana. And the Banganyana the, uh, there is a, uh, some kind of a, uh, the awareness cannot follow certain processes anymore. When they arrive to observe them, they're gone. This is the way they describe it. Becoming them. aware of the destructive part. Is the, uh, the destructive part, the breaking yeah. down the part, you know, the disappearance part. Mm. And then uh, the next, uh, uh, because of experience, this disappearance, there is a sense of fear. Bhayanana comes. Bhayanana, sense of fear. Fear, 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 fear the yeah, knowledge yeah. of fear. And then out of this uh, sense of fear, sense of despair arises. I don't remember the name of that Nyana particularly. Mm. And then after this, there is a uh, sense of a desire is born to escape out of that, uh, of that uh, um, situation. And the mind is uh, uh, going, uh, I forgot a couple of more Nyanas there, but arriving to a to a Patisanka Nyana. This is the 10 Nyana, it's called a Patisanka Nyana. And again, the three characteristics are uh, beginning to be observed again, but uh, uh, from, the, from the level of uh, the, uh, the body is disintegrating. So the, the compactness is already there. While in the Samasana Nyana, the, the, uh, the body is still compact, or the phenomena are still compact, like uh, two different entities. And then uh, the, the knowledge is further go to uh, 11th Nyana, which is uh, Sankara Upeka Nyana, of which the mind begins to be, uh, uh, how we said, indifferent, uh, stable to the uh, pleasant and you know, pleasant sensations which are arising in the body and the mind. And then when uh, su sufficient maturity uh, happens, or the Burmese tradition speaks about is when the mind is stabilized uh, and indifferent, they call it upeka, or this sense of equanimity, they use this word, equanimity, towards uh, uh, formations, uh, mental or physical, pleasant or unpleasant, then there is a certain moment comes of which the awareness moves to a so-called anulomaniana, Anuloma, Anuloma yeah. sense yeah. of a basically a transition is going on, and then you have a gotrabunyana, or just a one Trabu, yeah. gotrabunyana, switching of lineage, in a sense they're speaking from a being putujana going to, towards uh, Nibbana, and then the next one is uh, experience of Nibbana, they're speaking, and then the maganyana have been reached for a split second or a couple of seconds or whatever it is, uh, sp uh, according to their measurements, mm -hmm. and then the Palanyana is coming, which is the fruition. So that is uh, the, the 14 or 16 knowledges which the lady has mm. kind of elaborated there. So oh. he can comment about that thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah? Well, that is, uh, I'm aware of those things, yeah. Yeah, this is also inside knowledge, Vipassana knowledge, inside knowledge, yeah, what she yeah, said, yeah, correct. Yeah. Is that correct? Do you want to say? Uh, yes, I mentioned 13, 13 
Well, number 11 is uh, Sankara. I know that because I'm studying this for 12 years. 11th is Sankara Upekanyana. 12th is Anulomanyana. 13th is Gotrabunyana. The 14th is Maganyana. The 15th is Apalanyana. So maybe there is something else there, but I know that's 11th is Sankara Upekanyana. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter. We're not going to argue about the numbers. Yeah, maybe yeah, plus yeah, one, plus yeah, minus yeah, one, yeah. but that is the... And we can get the book about this, yeah, not a problem. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Bhante, back to you. Okay. Now, uh, this is uh, very important to understand that that they have, uh, this is coming from the uh, Buddha Gosa's book, you see. These are knowledges. They, uh, they, they, that, uh, that, that collection of uh, knowledges that they speak of is also called the Nava Maha Vidarsana Jnana. Nine. They, they are spoken of as nine also. And uh, but what I find is that I have been trying to find those jnanas in the sutras. But nowhere in the sutras do you find those things. It is only found in that Visuddhi Magga. So that means it has entered the Visuddhi Magga from somewhere. Maybe uh, some uh, people who meditated, uh, they coined those words. But when I examine the Satipatthana Sutra, I found nine knowledges like that, but not those knowledges. And that I have mentioned in that uh, book, the nine knowledges. <clears throat> and uh, that is where I think the meditation practice has going, gone on a different line. So, this, that different line has been uh, started by that uh, author Buddha Gosa and also maybe later meditators added these other things to the nine to make it thirteen or fourteen like that. Huh? But the real uh, uh, nine stages that you find is in the Satipatthana, where in the Satipatthana the Buddha mentions that in all the four Satipatthanas. In the, I have mentioned only the one connected with the meditation on the body. Iti ajyattangva kaya kaya nupasi virti bahiddhava kaya kaya nupasi ajyatta bahiddhava kaya kaya Those are the real uh, things found in the sutras. So that I have mentioned in that book. Nine stages. But they are very... Uh, those are real experiences that you uh, go through as you begin to become an arahant. That is the meaning of that. Do you understand that? Hmm. I don't understand what you said because you have to use the microphone.
um, I I only learned that uh, the the nine knowledge inside knowledges or thirteen or sixteen inside knowledges only attain to stream winner, not not the arahan. Ah, uh, well, it may be what some people say. Yeah. I would like to comment about that. Yeah. Now, what they are speaking is uh, in this practice uh, uh, is that uh, when Putujana is practicing, he has to go through these thirteen steps, the way the lady said, because the fourteenth is the Maganyana. Now, maybe they don't count as certain schools maybe don't count these like a nyana. So that she is referring to a 13 knowledges while the 14th is already in Ibana. Certain people who count these as a knowledge mm. then basically maybe become 14 or 15. So mm. this is kind of a differing about uh, the, the, the way they regard them. Now what they're speaking is when the, uh, the, the person becomes Sotapana, then he doesn't start from the beginning, what she is referring to. So when he begins to practice intensive practice again, he starts from Udaya Bayanyana. If you count Udaya Bayanyana, then basically going to Maganyana, there are nine knowledges left. So in a sense, the uh, uh, Sakadagami, Anagami, and Arahanta are uh, uh, going through a nine knowledges. This is what she is referring. But again, these are technical things which is coming from Visuddhi Maga as well as the Abhidhamma. And it's different than what Bhante is uh, referring yeah. to. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Bhante, now uh, you mentioned about uh, reduction of experience. So when we are at the threshold of the Arupa Loka, that means we have gone past the fourth jhana, many people refer to the next four stages as the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth jhana. And they even refer to the final one, cessation of sensation and feeling, to be the ninth jhana. But I understand these are really not jhanas. Yeah. What are they really called uh, after the fourth jhana? They are called ayatanas. Ayatanas. They are not jhanas. Mm -hmm. These are the mistakes that people have been making uh, after, of course, the earlier teachings here. Yeah. And uh, when one has reached that point of cessation of sensations, that means what other people call the ninth jhana, that very last stage where the mind has yeah. ceased, what is still happening is the body. Is there still what is called Ayu Sankara? Oh, yes. The Ayu Sankara is what I call the, uh, the living part which is uh, simply what is necessary for the life to continue in the body. That is called the metabolism. Metabolism, yeah. yeah. But the, in, in many sutras, there is only mention of three kinds of Sankara and Ayu is, Sankara is not mentioned. This... Uh, no, no, that is because uh, the Ayu Sankara is not a part of the mental process. Ah, that's the body yeah. Sankara. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So those three other Sankara, the Vachi Sankara, yeah. Chitta Sankara, yeah. and the uh, Kaya yeah. Sankara are actually the mental. The mental. Yeah. But the Kaya Sankara relates to the breathing. Yeah, the Kaya Sankara relates to breathing because that is, refers to the energy, the energy that is necessary for the men, mental thing to continue. Uh, so it is the respiration and breathing that yeah. delivers the energy to the mind. That's right. So yeah. that is the Kaya Sankara part where it relates to the yeah. mind. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mante. Okay. Uh, 
Bhante about this question uh, which Billy has spoken, the gentleman. Mm. Now, in, uh, you describe the jhanas as reductions of perception, and the process of perception. Is that correct? The jhanas… No, no, no. Say it again. In the process of affection. As the, uh, at the process of attention. No, no, no. Affection. Affection. So the jhanas are reductions of the process of affection, yeah. not of perception. No, perception is the ayatanas. Okay, that, that is uh, nice to clarify this because yeah, yeah, yeah. we didn't clarify. So the, five, the four jhanas are reductions of the process of affection, the affective process, which is like the Vedana process. Yeah, yeah. And then this, the variations of the uh, four ayatanas, which are based on the, on the four jhana, they are reductions of the process of perception. Is that correct? The, which is the cognitive process. Is the cognitive. One is the reduction of the, of the affectionate process, the elements of the affectionate process. The other is the reduction of the cognitive process. That's right. Okay, that's kind of a not... It was not clear the way I was hearing. Maybe yeah, somebody yeah, have figured yeah, it out. So yeah. to clarify it for the benefit of all people. Yeah. Now, uh, you uh, the, the, this uh, reduction we uh, we uh, we are explaining it with the three different sankaras. We have these, the kaya san, uh, the the uh, the, uh, the vachi sankara, which is is that correct? The the in the first and the second jhana, the in the first jhana the 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 roots uh, the roots of the uh, cognitive process which is the thinking this is thinking like a vitaka vichara are still operating in the second jhana the roots of the cognitive process meaning vitaka vichara cease to function in the second jhana yeah, this vachi yeah. sankara ceases to function yeah so then we are going to the fourth jhana then uh, the the the, uh, the the knowing of the elements which are involved within the uh, the jhanas like a su uh, su uh, sukha uh, and uh, uh, yeah, piti yeah, yeah, and ekagata yeah, yeah. is yeah. happening in a cognition level but without words a non-verbal uh, knowing is that correct uh, how do we know if you don't think yeah uh, the the main thing is uh, the effective process is the emotional part. So, but uh, how, 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 what, what, how when the... When we speak of affection, yes. we are talking about the emotional part. Yes, we re uh, the, the, the process of reduction of the, the, uh, the components of the affectional part in the jhanas, but the knowing part knows that. No, no. Knowing part is already there till we come to the the ayatanas. Yes. The cognitive part. Well, what I'm speaking is the knowing part knows the the, the reduction of the uh, uh, knows of the reduction of the elements. Knows this uh, uh, so, uh, pt uh, uh, turn to be a neutral. Then the 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 the, the third jhana appears. Then in a, in a third jhana, the sukha becomes neutral. Pleasant sensations turn to a neutral sensation. Then the consciousness, the attention moves to the ekagata uh, and uh, sati, which is the attention. Now they are there together with a sense of unity unification and the, that duality ceases the way you said and then the mind is unified and then in that stage also the breathing in and breathing out ceases stops to function according to the is that stopping to function the kaya sankara is also coming to a stop is that correct does the kaya sankara ceases to find where the, the breathing stops is that correct breathing stops so and now the body uh, is uh, only kept alive by uh, the metabolism is based on the oxygen and the carbon dioxide uh, release. So when the, the body, uh, uh, the breathing stops, then uh, who is sustain, what, what sustains the body? In a sense, what is um, the, metabolic, the, the metabolistic process depends on the oxygen and the carbon dioxide uh, uh, ex exchange or uh, uh, release and in intake. When you talk about respiration, yes, it is important to understand that there are two parts to it. 
one is the chemical process which is to break down the sugar molecule and produce hydrogen and carbon dioxide yes that is a chemical process yes but the other is the breathing in and breathing out process the mechanical process the mechanical process now that part is what is stopped not the chemical process yes so when 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 you say breathing has stopped yes. it only means taking in oxygen and sending out carbon dioxide that part has stopped yes because maybe the activities have uh, uh, the activities the, the mind is so quiet the, the the body is in a such a quiet state of place there are no activities so the body doesn't generate any more a uh, carbon dioxide the, the metabolic process that, doesn't that, is that, that correct not that it doesn't generate anything the generation is going on but the breathing is not necessary so how, how so what you're saying is the chemical process begin to take care of solving the problem between oxygen and uh, and the carbon dioxide it's not yeah. necessary to be it's not a such a big quantities so the body doesn't need to expel and take ah, more it's such what, a such a miniature part basically because no activity yeah, no yeah, glucose yeah, burning and so yeah. on in yoga when i have started this like a paramansa yogananda they speaking is that there's a correlation between the breathing and breathing out with the two external two internal spinal uh, 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 energy flows which is like a ida in pingala so everything basically begin the body begin in that state they have also cessation of breath in their uh, systems they speak they explain this the body is recharged from the energy from within it's not based on the chemical process anymore but this is a maybe very closely related no they are just trying to explain what is going on yes but uh, that doesn't have to be correct yes so this is how that to hear what bant how bant sees it and then this in the four jhana then from the four jhana as a basis Mm. when the mind is unified then there is a steps so basically this ayatanas this is reduction of the process of the cognitive process now is starting the yeah. cognitive process begin to be reduced step by step until come a moment of which the mind is very not sure anymore seeing something or perceiving yeah. something or not perceiving yeah. something and then the mind goes in this uh, cessation of uh, of a uh, perception and feeling uh, because now they also completely reduced to almost uh, un 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 unnoticeable level and then somehow the mind also uh, releases that or give or that not a mind but that process has been still uh, 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 coming also to cessation which is the sanya veda eta niroda is that mm. correct so there is a misconception or a this understanding that the uh, niroda samapatti the cessation of attainment niroda samapatti at, uh, samapatti is uh, uh, attainment niroda cessation is the same thing with the sanya vedaita niroda and uh, you mentioned this but can can you discuss uh, the sanya vedaita niroda is it same or different with the sanya vedaita niroda because if we take the big, the, the dictionary buddhist dictionary of the uh, of the uh, German monk Nyana Nyana Ponika or Nyana Tiloka 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 he describes that these two processes the same I know that is because the tradition takes that to be the same yeah but what i point out is that it is not the same so what is the difference pantik can you yeah, can clarify for us that please? is the sutra explains that you have to read the chulla vyuha sutra chulla vyuha sutra this majimanika yeah that sutra explains the difference between both of them yeah yeah okay so we will go into verify that not only that even the mahavedala sutra explains that mahavedala sutra both sutras mahavedala and chulla vedala Chulla Vedala, Maha Vedala. Yes, this is the discourse between the Damadina and the Visaka Visa yeah, as well yeah. as the uh, S S Sariputta and Kachayana. Yeah, yeah, Maha Kachayana. yeah. Okay, so we're going to look through that. Mm. Okay, maybe this can be discussed some other time. Yeah. For the south.
the important thing to understand is that uh, <coughs> people have misunderstood that uh, nirodha samapatti they don't understand nirodha samapatti because they don't understand the paticca samuppada understanding the paticca samuppada is the nirodha samapatti you have to be conscious to have the nirodha samapatti that is why i call it the the awakening from the dream of existence which is changing from uh, existential thinking to experiential thinking that is the nirodha samapat uh, uh, what uh, the other school of the burmese tradition the the uh, the um, buddha gosa tradition the visuddhimagga they speak that the nirodha samapati is the skill the skill of the uh, noble man like uh, anagami and uh, yeah. uh, uh, arahant yeah. consciously to end the state of, cessa- of cessation of uh, in nibbana yeah, yeah this is what they're speaking yeah. but bante perceived this uh, in a different light the way you just yeah. explained yeah so that is the the uh, bante explaining this not the conscious uh, entering in the nibbana state cessation state but the the bil, uh, the, the the state of which the attention is that the attention is totally withdrawn from the existential uh, way of seeing things so the, now the attention is only is the, uh, uh, um, revol- uh, staying in the field of ex- experience yeah what is bond what i call the paradigm shift the paradigm that shift that paradigm shift is the nirodha samapatti or oh, the nirodha samapatti is the paradigm shift mm. now this this uh, 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 what is the difference uh, what in that case what is the difference of uh, uh, entering in a sense uh, how, how to say it you said this that those who become an arahant Mm-hmm. he is now uh, uh, liberated from the compulsion or from the delusion or the dream this existent uh, uh, existent exists such a yeah. things like existence exists yeah. or the entity exists the world exists the self exists he also after his liberation from that uh, wrong view or a uh, misunderstanding Mm-hmm. he can uh, uh, when he comes back again to a normal state of consciousness he he can exist in both in existential view as well as in the experiential That's view right. but he is not anymore uh, uh, in the delusion the uh, mm-hmm. existence exists even if he's using the same vocabulary he can use the same words like the yeah, buddha about yeah, human beings yeah. women etc mm-hmm. but he has been uh, freed from the wrong view that such a things actually yeah, exist yeah. Okay so that's it. thank you about So any more question what bante described just now explaining the various stages of reduction actually bante has given that uh, that teaching some time back and i've prepared quite a extensive notes already on that so tomorrow night i will be presenting the notes uh, showing the the graphical diagram the flow chart how it all happens so for those of you who are interested please come back tomorrow night and we'll take a look at the the chart of how all that is flowing ah very good Yeah. Thank you Bante. Sadu. Sadu, sadu, sadu. sadu. <laughs>